before you continue this video that would be extremely helpful you're going to want to know how to download automatic 1111 and install the plugin to automatic 1111 after that's installed once you do both of those things uh, and follow the instructions specifically the way they're done you can come back to this video and I'll show you how to do it so first off you're gonna get a folder that looks something like this sd.webui or something similar to web UI you wanna open that folder and you might have a folder that looks like this with an environment run and update button um, obviously it already told you to click the update button first and then click run to do everything so you'll either have this folder or you'll have this web UI folder with all of this in it and you're gonna wanna open a web UI user windows batch file not the shell script if you have this type of folder if you don't you have this you just click run and when you click run it'll open up a command prompt that looks like this it'll load up all this slowly and then you'll get something that says running on local URL gives you a link with an IP you're gonna want to enter that into your web browser and open it or it'll open it automatically it opens it automatically for me so I assume it would probably do the same for you if it doesn't just copy paste it into your URL press enter and you're into the GUI uh, once you do that you're gonna be welcomed with this screen on your web browser and if you follow the instructions properly you should have this depth tab and you should have all these now once you have this you can do single images or you can do single videos batch processes I've noticed that batch processing image by image or frame by frame um, causes a lot of problems so I'm not doing it that way because it always crashes and it doesn't do what it's supposed to do uh, single image is great for like testing out what it might look like so if you grab a couple of stills from the video you're gonna convert and then pop it in here check it out you can kinda fine-tune your settings but for this tutorial I use single video so right here you'll have this right here even to suggest you use uh, Zoe depth model since they provide the highest level of coherency between frames so first you're gonna want to import your video by just clicking and then you import the video you wanna import and then once you do that you'll be met with this and then you come down and you click Zodepth Outdoor. Zodepth Indoor and NK. NK is like a hybrid between indoor and outdoor which holds kind of okay results but not really that good. Uh, indoor is alright but it definitely doesn't have the best results. Outdoor seems to be the best Zodepth model that I can find so far in this list. You have all your Midas's as well. Uh, high and low res. But you're going to want to click Zodepth K Outdoor after you do that you can either turn boost on or off I'm pretty sure this is the boost monocular depth setting uh, I can't run it because my 1070 Ti it just poops uh, but you can keep this on if you have new gen hardware you should be fine to run this but for this tutorial for a low spec computer so I'm gonna turn it down and show you the lowest spec possible to run on the lowest computer 1070 Ti is probably around that model that everybody will have for low spec at this point in time so I'm going to turn this off and you're going to be met with these two slider bars here. You're going to want to keep this at 384 and you want to drop this all the way down to 512. Now since I'm recording I'm not going to completely run this through because it's just not going to work the way I want it to. Uh, but once you're done that you have a, a few options here. So you keep save outputs because that will save the output to the folder that you specify inside of settings. So if you go into settings here, go to path for saving, you just choose this path right here you make a path for yourself or a folder that you want to put it in and this will default it to this file path so all these will be ignored and this file path will be used for your saves so once that happens you want to come down here make sure this is set properly 512 and 384 over here keep save outputs on if you want the depth map as well you keep output depth map if you don't want it and you just want to do the generate stereoscopic images the side by sides you can click this and turn depth maps off but if you want the depth map keep this on if you want the stereoscopic image as well you can keep that on you'll get both of them or you can turn one or the other off whichever you prefer now once you do that keep all this the same turn off red scion anaglyph and just keep your left and right because you don't want the red scion right now I suggest you do that later on uh, keep separation the same balance and magic exponent the same divergence you can play with 2.5 is default you can go up to 3 drop the 2 see what feels comfortable for you you can play around with that uh, and then once you get all that set up and you find everything that you want to do here you click generate and then it'll come up on this command prompt it'll do all the things it'll take some time uh, it may look like it freezes every now and then possibly 
Uh, it's not freezing, most likely. You can always check by going into Task Manager, and if the program is running, if Python is doing something with your memory, it's most likely processing something, so leave it alone until it's done. And once it's done, it'll export to the specified folder that you specified in your settings. You can go in, you can check it out. I think it exports as an AVI, uh, and it doesn't play very well on most platforms. VLC doesn't seem to want to play it very well. It, like, freezes in the middle of the video. Um, Windows Media Player doesn't want to play it. Uh, I suggest you take it, put it in Handbrake, and then convert it into an MP4 file. Um, it's going to be around the same quality. It's not going to be a horrible quality. If you know how to use Handbrake well enough, you should be fine with your export on that. You should have pretty decent quality on that. Um, once you do that, you can use it on pretty much any video platform or video program you want. Uh, but yeah, that's that's pretty much it. You just do all these after you follow the two basic tutorials in the uh, description that I'm going to leave for you. And you should be able to do your own videos in Zodepth.